Frank, uh, I'd like you to respond to the following statement. And then John and Anjanette, I'd like you to put on your reporter hats and uh, each ask you, Frank, a follow-up question based on your response. Okay? Here's the statement. Ultimately, the public is left with manufactured bipartisan pseudo-debates that conceal two undeniable facts. There is increasing demand for voices that challenge the bipartisan consensus on many critical issues in America, and there is increasing demand for authentic and unscripted discussion between the leading presidential candidates. Frank, your response. Well, I, you know, that might have been true back when we started, uh, because, you know, I've been involved in running presidential candidates, and, and, and so has Chairman Kirk. Uh, and one of the things you hate, after you've won the nomination, you've fought for years, is suddenly an outside group comes in and tells you, you're going to do this in a certain way, okay? They hate it. And so we always took the approach, we're going to go at this slowly. And every year we've done this, we've taken more and more away from the candidates. And I mean, as I mentioned, the candidates, uh, the Bush campaign and the Kerry campaign did us a great favor last time by coming up with this crazy contract and demanding. And so there's no contract this time. We're going. So I, I don't think that, that that criticism holds water. And there's one thing, and I, I told someone earlier, Paul and I, and you know, our, our commission is made up of very diverse people. Uh, in addition to Chairman Kirk, you have people such as uh, the former head of the Federal Communication New Commission, Newton Minow. Uh, you have the, the president of Howard University. You have Caroline Kennedy. Uh, we have two former United States Senators, John Danforth of Missouri and Al Simpson of uh, Wyoming. Uh, very diverse. We have uh, the former head of the League of Women Voters, Dorothy Dot Ridings, a former publisher, the Bradenton, Bradenton, what? Carol. Uh, so, you know, that we have Republicans, Democrats, but what we, when we do our work on this commission, we don't wear Republican or Democrat or independent hats. We wear USA hats. I mean, I put my time in with the Republican Party. Kirk did for his. But our work on this commission is our gift or commitment in our final days of politics to the American people. We so firmly believe in it. It's gotten me in a lot of trouble at the White House. George Herbert Walker Bush hated the debates. He's the only former president who won't put his name on our letterhead as an honorary member of, of, of the commission. Uh, I hated the debates, the White House, I mean, I was in hot water all the time. And to some extent, Paul was in trouble with the Clintons because they don't want to mess, you know, anyone messing with it. But we really believe it. Uh, and it worked very hard at it. And when you look at it, we've done 18 debates. And other than the grumbles from people like Pat Buchanan or Ralph Nader, most people think that we've done it in a professional manner uh, and been fair and balanced. And that's all you can ask. Well, I think my question would be um, the the commission and the people that you that you mentioned. Um, the the debates are are created and designed and by really the political establishment, which is necessary. I mean, the professionalism that you bring um, to the debate format is invaluable. And you mentioned taking little steps, but I wonder how do you find ways to inject some creativity or some outside voices. Um, that are not part of you know this, these decades-long establishment that has kind of created. This After every community. series of debate, we do symposia. We bring in people from all over the country, academia, the media, uh, to come in and critique us. How can we do this better? What improvements can we make? And we take it very seriously, and we do our best to uh, to, to you know make corrections as we go along. That's all all you can do. We work. They're very different from when we started in 1988 what you're going to see in, in 2008. Uh, and you know, we hope that we've improved them. And we, we hope that uh, uh, this whole question of political establishment, the, the parties have nothing to do with the commission. They don't contribute any money. The candidates have nothing to do with the commission. They don't contribute any money. The federal government has to, we're a private entity. We raise all our money privately. None of the money comes. Uh, the, we have one full-time employee. Uh, Janet Brown has been our executive director, has been with us for 20 years. 
uh, Chairman Kirk and I, and no member of the commission gets a nickel. Uh, we all donate our time and effort. And as I would say, it's our contribution. And trying to change, I think, what we're trying to do with the internet this time. And we've got people out there working, meeting with YouTube, meeting with uh, you know all the organizations that are on the net to try to figure out how we can do this in a fairly, uh, a fair way that will also not degrade what's going on here. We're choosing the president of the United States. Well, are, you, are you saying you're not a member of the political establishment anymore? When did you get kicked out? <laughs> uh, did you lose your card or something? I lost my card. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, it's it's interesting, uh, um, and and you, and you kind of you you talked about this in generalities, Frank. But what I'm really interested in is is uh, uh, and based on what the, the the quote that that Robert that Robin read about the authentic and and not authentic. What what are you thinking about when you, when you when you're trying you say to, to improve the debates? Are you trying to make them so? They're more illuminating. Are you trying to make it so you think that when people look back on the race, they're going to say that those debates really had an impact? Are you trying to do both? And, and if so, how do you do that? Uh, that's a really good question, John, and we worry about it all the time. We view the debates as an educational function, that we want to educate the American public who are watching on television uh, as the process. And we try to improve that. We try to get so that the one line that you mentioned uh, you know, I will never forget, I was sitting about where Harvey was when Ronald Reagan was on that stage with uh, Walter Mondale. Uh, the Wall Street Journal had trashed him about being too old. And we rehearsed Reagan. We never got to the age question. We never got to it. But as that reporter asked that question, Bill Phillips, many of you may remember Bill Phillips. He was a reporter here and came back as my chief of staff. Bill was sitting with me in the front row. And when that reporter was asking that age question, President Reagan looked down at me and he gave me a little wink and I nudged to, to Bill Phillips and I said, he's ready. And when he asked, you know, he gave that answer, that you know, he would not take advantage of the relative youth and inexperience of his opponent. And that place went wild. Uh, Fritz Mondale told me that he knew at that moment that that campaign was over. Well, you hope that you're going to get away from those one-liners that everyone remembers. Remember Jerry Ford saying that Poland was not within the Iron Curtain that probably destroyed any chance he had of winning. And so we're trying to get a system and a format where it's more educational. You probably always have one-liners because they're going to try to come up with the one-liners. But the more we can educate the public, as you said, I watched the debate between Obama and Hillary, and you're so That last part of that debate on Iraq was one of the most enlightening things that, that, that I see. I was very uncomfortable for Mrs. Clinton, I'm yeah. sure. And also, when they started differentiating where they stood on, on universal health care. That's what we hope for, to get there. 